We have Eric Reed on with me here tonight. We're going to talk about marketing. And this is a topic that we're going to really kind of dive deep on because, you know, what I think is interesting about this conversation and what I'm kind of excited about, uh, Eric, is that we typically have a lot of real estate investor uh, minded people on. And, and like I told you yesterday, it's really important for us to bring in like experts in other industries and see what they're doing and what, sure. try to understand because frankly, I think we as investors, we get so uh, tunnel visioned on some things mm -hmm. that uh, we completely miss what may be going on in the market and what might be working in other avenues. Yeah. So I, I just like the variety. So I really yeah. appreciate you being on the show. And if you want to hear more from Eric after this, make sure you check out Rethink Marketing Podcast. I really appreciate your time, Eric. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, I hey, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for uh, plugging the podcast. There, we uh, we we do rethink marketing quite a bit, and that's why I'm actually you know excited to talk to you as well. I think there's a, you know all business segments right now. I think in life you have to rethink things anyway, but particularly when it comes to marketing, mm -hmm. there's a lot of rethinking that has to be done right now. So. Um, so I'm happy to, uh, and excited to any chance I get to talk to people about just some of the things that can be done or should be rethought in marketing. So, well, let's, let's jump right in. Like, uh, you know, you and I chatted yesterday and we, uh -huh. just to give, give kind of a heads up is exactly what we're doing. A lot of real estate investors use direct mail, for example, mm -hmm. that's usually the go-to, uh, we're not seeing, as far as I'm concerned, we're not seeing the response. Uh, with direct mail, as we usually uh, see, what are sure. some alternatives or what should we be thinking about when we're dealing with direct mail to stand out? Well, I think, first of all, with, uh, first of all, with direct mail, it's one of those tactics that if you talk to a bunch of people, they'd say, oh, it's not a sexy tactic. It's not cutting edge. It's not anything that's new out there, but you know, everything kind of goes in cycles. And so direct mail has always been a very powerful piece of marketing. I, I happen to think it's still a very powerful piece, but I would just ask people to always think of a, a couple things here. Marketing right now, we have to stop shouting at people. So, mm -hmm. you know, marketing is a lot of shouting. If you're driving down the road, you know, there's, you know, you cash for your house signs posted up on the telephone poles, et cetera. There's, right. you know, there, a lot of places you look, you're being shouted at. And so we have to work harder on building a relationship. Well, well, how do you do that with direct mail? I mean, it's, it's not like, you know, the people before you send it in, but I think, I think we need to slow down and really understand that our message and what we're saying in the direct mail piece works. Uh, direct mail doesn't work or not work. The messaging that you're sending to people is what works or what doesn't work. Is it the same message over and over and over again? Is it something as simple as the same color paper that it's going out? Um, do people feel like you're, you're, you're personalizing the message to them, that you're talking to them and not shouting at them? So um, I believe that uh, direct mail works well, uh, but it really depends on what your expectations are. Um, and if something is starting to fizzle and not work as well as it used to, then it's time to maybe change up that tactic a little bit or the message and then retest it and remeasure it. Sure. You know, one of the things I, I, I recently watched uh, some training material on in sales. And one of the things that really stood out to me is finding ways, you know, that he brought up something very similar, you know, regarding the shouting and uh, yeah, it's almost a hard sales. He was suggesting that we need to, find ways in which we can add some sort of value to the discussion. So I was, yeah, I was I, racking I, my brains on if, if that's the case, <laughs> like what kind of value could I add to a direct mail piece in which to s change things up a little bit? Well, well so, um, so let's, let's, let's paint out a little scenario of what the direct mail could be. So if, if, if you were sitting down, if we were sitting down together and to craft a direct mail piece, what, what, would the, what would the overall message of that direct mail piece be? Because to understand that would kind of help me answer that question. I mean, what well, would we want? Typic yeah, typically, you know, to be as uh, cliche as possible, typically what we, what real estate investors do is send out a, a card that does exactly what you say, 
yelling at people, you know, usually it is a, is a credit card. It's a, not a credit card. It's a postcard that uh -huh. has a font that looks like it's handwritten mm -hmm. and with some variety of colors. And, you know, it's scribbled on there. We buy houses cash. And right. then reasons, you know, uh, it's, it's very, uh, and, and I'm familiar wow. with those. I mean, I, I've seen them and so forth, but, um, and, you know, I've worked with some clients in the past who've done similar things, but the, the, where I was going with that is the message to the person opening it is we're, uh, it sounds like we're hoping that we kind of connect with them for they need, they, they need, it's not really a want thing we're, we're whether they realize it or not, we're trying to uncover or, identify a need that, Hey, this might be the answer to what we're trying to do. This might right. be an opportunity for, for something that could be a benefit to them. So I think what says, a, I think what says a lot about this is, you know, you, you explained an email that sounds like if you had 10 people come to the, come to the room and say, here's what I send out eight, eight of those would look pretty darn similar. Very similar. And so, yeah. And so I think, I think the way that we, so and we probably have these in our system. Hey, we're going to send out email number one, or we're going to send not email. I'm sorry. We're going to send out direct mail. Number one, direct mail. Number two, direct mail. Number three, et cetera. So I would throw those all out. And I, for me, you know, I, I look back to P I look back to my life when I was younger, there were times before I was a homeowner that um, I was looking for rent to owns. And so people, those were invested. You know, I had a, a guy who I got in touch with who, would buy houses for people who could be pre-qualified with a few issues. And then he'd, you know, do a land contract for a couple of years and then flip the house over to them. And so, um, and that was a scary proposition to me, but his approach was just very conversational in, in the direct mail piece. It was, it was identifying with, you know, and let not to get too corny, but, you know, you know, we're dealing with human beings and, you know, you know, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. And, there's all these different things that go on. And so I think we just have to, a big thing that's going on in marketing right now is called personalized marketing. It was happening before COVID. It's become more important during COVID. And, and it, it deals with that stop shouting at me mentality. People really want the messaging to come from marketing, to come from somebody that, that, that they feel like is a community member, feels like somebody that shares the same schools with them, that shares different things, depending how big your community is, you know, if it's mm -hmm. a regional, but I'm, I'm you know, you really got to personalize that message. And so I just think that, you, you know, to go way back, I think an example of how to do that would be um, to just softly come in with, if this is something you're experiencing, this might be an option. And I know some people might be listening and saying, well, that's kind of basic and rudimentary, but, you know, the basics are what we've gotten away from. And so I think you need to maybe in addition to that, do what we'd call like an AB test. And I'm sure that's being done out there by sending out a couple different versions, finding out which one gets some traction and then doubling down on that and pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. um, I, and so that would be my piece to the direct mail, but I, I think there's an opportunity with some digital that at, at, I'll share with you here at some point of creating an intender channel, which would, be the digital version of what, what's going on with direct mail. Sure. You know, the, and, well, what, what really sparked this thought was that, you know, we send out this marketing material, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which is usually direct mail that's shouting at people. But in the end, when they call, when they do call in, my mindset is typically around, okay, how do I solve this person's problem? Because they're typically mm -hmm. calling because they have a problem of some kind. Absolutely. It seems to be, in my mind anyway, there seems to be a disconnect between the marketing material and what we're out to do. Does that make and sense? It, it it does. I think that's a common. Uh, I think that's a common pitfall, if you will. You know, sometimes we're too close to what we're doing, and so we see it the way that we want to see it, with an end objective of what we want, and we really have to look at that from the objective of what the person that we're marketing with sure. uh, and trying to build that relationship with wants. So what, what would you say that disconnect though is in, in the investment real estate business? Well, the disconnect is, is that, you know, like you said, we're shouting at them. We buy houses cash, you know, if, if distressed properties buy as is. Um, mm -hmm. But frankly, more times than not, when somebody's calling in, you know, it, it, 
it's uh, that's actually the last thing on their mind. It's mm -hmm. usually um, the property is whether it's pre foreclosure or there's some financial hardship or a parent has passed away or, you know, it's in, in it's in probate. There's all of these uh, other these scenarios that we're really trying to solve or trying to help them mm -hmm. with or help them through. It's almost as much of a partnership as it is a mm -hmm. we buy houses cash. Um, and and I'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm thinking that it, it would be beneficial to have our marketing reflect that versus. You know, I, I think so. But how, how do you do that in the printed word? And so, you know, I think what's so important, you know, just take take into account you and I are looking at each other right now. Um, you look like you're in a pleasant background. Um, you know, you just your your demeanor and your and your in your vocal, you know, your your nonverbal cues, everything makes me feel comfortable with you. Well, try communicating that in a direct mail piece. You can't, but what you can do as a potential is, and you know, you know, everybody's either got a, uh, a website, a Google, my business page, some, some way they've got Facebook page. Everybody has some connection to a digital existence right now. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't, you, you obviously you need to do that because for me, if, if I was to, if I was to come into the, to the market and say, you know, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to differentiate myself and I want to be seen as somebody who's helping with a problem because, you know, that that's going to be what they hear from, from everybody. We want to help you with the problem. We want to help with, with your problem, but that's going to go a lot further if they actually know a little bit about you or feel comfortable with you. So how do you accomplish that with direct mail? And, and so what I would recommend would be a good tech uh, tactic to try is to send out a direct mail piece now, I know that we measure everything ROI. If I spend X amount per piece and, you know, how much does it cost? What would I get back? But if we send out a direct mail piece, encouraging people to, to go to our website or to go to our mikesmith.com, our personal page, and we have a YouTube video there. We have a couple testimonials, not from people who've necessarily helped, but from people in the community who we've worked with and who know us professionally, whether it's in a spiritual relationship or just whatever you do in the community. I would use direct mail as an entry point to get people to understand who I am because there's that point before they meet you in person or on the phone that they're going to search you right away. Everybody's going to go to Google and search you. Is this person, mm -hmm. you know, what do I find out about them? So if they had a way to get to your site, if that, e, if that direct mail could drive them to something more tangible, something with more substance where they could feel comfortable with you, I would think that would be worth a test to see if you could drive phone calls. And that might be a way to take direct mail to more of a digital place. It's still being used as the tactic to get on the doors of the people. But there's a there's a there's an objective that you want to engage with people so they can hear you, so they can see you and they can uh, see what other people are saying about you. Sure. No, that that would be an interesting tactic. You know, I've been trying to, uh, you know, the direct mail, we, we always put our mm -hmm. uh, URL on there. And uh -huh. we do get some people who, who navigate to the site because of it, you know, out of curiosity. But one of the other things that you said that I think is really uh, particular that I think everybody probably should make note of is you said, try to make it local. Because I can't yeah. tell you how many people call in thinking that I'm some national company and they don't even realize that I'm in their backyard, you know? Um, yeah. So I've been and even I'm, thinking about going as far as putting a picture of the state or something on the, on the postcard, just to, to identify visually in some way that we're, we're local. Yeah. I think, uh, well, I think that's, you know, the old the adage as well, they'll, they'll recognize the phone number. Well, you know, landlines are quickly becoming a thing of the past, you know, so the area code doesn't necessarily recognize that right away. I, I just want to jump back real quick to one thing you said. I know that there's, that we mentioned the website and I know that we do that, but I'm talking about a much more uh, soft approach, not mm -hmm. shouting at somebody that just says, hey, of course we, our URLs here, but what I'm saying to you, the point of this, the point of this direct mail piece to you is not to toss it in the trash, not to say another one of these. I'm appealing to you that says, hey, look, at, come to my website. 
you know, life's full of, you know, like I said, good things happen to uh, bad things happen to good people, etc. But I think it'd be interesting. I think it'd be very powerful with the message, the desired outcome of sending that uh, direct mail piece was the objective to get people to your site, not to make the phone call. I know it sounds crazy, but if they get to your site, the phone call is going to come if they like what they see. To go sure. back to your localization part, I, I think, um, you know, I think now, first of all, if you send out a direct mail piece, you're going to buy zones, you're going to buy zip codes, you're going to buy areas that you want. Mm -hmm. um, but still, people go to their mail, they're used to getting stuff that might not be necessarily for them. It just comes to the, to the house address. So um, I, I think it's very important that they pick up on that your local. I mean, I, I'm assuming that it's a, it's a very local business that you, that's mm -hmm. what you're looking for. So, because it's gotta be in your geographic area. There's one thing that I mentioned earlier, which would go to the localization part. So uh, there's two things, actually, when you're looking at SEO, uh, search engine optimization and taking, you know, making the most of your, of your search, it's not just about putting in Google words. It's not just about doing that because everybody's doing that and you're bidding on the searches. You really got to take it to a local level. The more, we Google's important, but the more that we build relationships with our local community organizations and get backlinks on their websites and things like that, that's going to cause you to rank and search uh, better in your local community. It's, 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 there's a lot of new tactics out there for what's called local SEO. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we, we move so quickly to try to get into the digital age that we forget that sponsoring the baseball teams sponsoring the, you know, the, the fish dinners uh, at the community churches, all these kind of things I'm sure a lot of people are doing. Um, but those translate then into search traffic and building your reputation online. So sure. uh, sometimes the old is, is, even though it's considered to be kind of stale and slow moving, it can kind of work together with pushing us forward and getting more acquisition, which is what uh, we're all looking for. Sure. So if just as a reminder, everybody, if you like to, to hear or learn more, make sure you uh, follow Eric through his podcast, which is that rethink marketing, uh, definitely going to, I'm sure you drop a lot of information that people can take action on right in that, sh in that show pretty regularly. We do. The, the episodes are about 12 minutes long, but then we do, those are when just myself and my partner, Colin are, are talking. Uh, we just kind of, we started this because we used to go get breakfast a couple times a month and we just talk marketing and, and we just thought, you know, that we could help some people. We're about educating and pushing uh, rethinking. Um, and then we do have some significant guests that come on for longer episodes. And uh, there's some good, there's some good tidbits on there about things to try on marketing and marketing doesn't have to cost $10,000 a month. It can cost $200 a month. There's some good tactics out there that uh, if you talk to your local media company, they might not tell you about them. There's a lots of good ways to market at very affordable entry points to try stuff out. Well, in this episode, let's, let's focus on that, uh, that affordable side. You were talking about the online marketing mm -hmm. that people could take advantage of. What are some of those strategies and tactics that you, you're seeing right now? Well, so I'm not a big proponent of Facebook advertising. I think Facebook is a social place. It's where people are, you know, kind of being families online. However, in the space that, that many of your listeners are in, I think there's an avenue to do some Facebook advertising. Uh, and, and it's not from your personal page. You, you know, you create a business page. It, you know, it takes about literally about two minutes to create a business page off of your personal page. And there's something called boosted posts on there. So you can, you can put out a post of, of your flyer, of something you're doing um, for... Uh, the direct mail piece that you would want to do, or maybe some kind of, you know, coffee talk you're having someplace about, you know, you know, the investment property, whatever the, the end game is there. Um, the point to this is that Facebook has what are called boosted posts. So you can take your post and I'm, I'm sure many people know this, but, and, mm -hmm. but it's a very effective way. I, I use it for a handful of clients when it's the right client. Um, and it's mostly business services and, and real estate type of stuff. Um, and so you just boost the posts uh, within a, a certain uh, mod. You can pick the zone, you can pick the behavior. So it's very targeted. And you can do that, you know, for 50, 60, $150 a month and reach about a thousand people a day in your geographic area that fit the profile you're looking for. So I would imagine most people are doing that. It's one of the most 
uh, it's one of the most understood affordable ways to digital market. Mm -hmm. But what I would, what I would ask people to do that is affordable as well is all those types of tactics that you use, whether let's use this Facebook one as example, you're going to be driving people to your website. That's the, Mm -hmm. when they click on it, they're going to go to the website. And so there's something called an intender channel that is very high tech, but easy to execute. And tender channel means is you're creating channels on your website of intent. So if somebody clicks on a boosted Facebook post and they come to your website and your Google analytics will tell you that they came there, you Mm -hmm. built, you, you, you know, you, you put a, a pixel on your site, you can cookie them. You can do that through GoDaddy, through any of the website builders that are out there. You can, Everybody has a friend in digital marketing these days and and they can help you do that as well. But essentially then you start building a channel of people who are showing intent. So the reason, but how do you know what the intent is? If they, if you put out something specific on Facebook, or if you do something specific through an email blast, which would be the digital version of what you're doing on direct mail, you are aware of what that message was in either one of those. And then you know from that specific day or the next 48 hours, that traffic, what came from that ad uh, from the UTM code or the pixel or however you set it up. Then you know that these people came from that specific ad where I talked about getting out of debt, maybe as an example. And so you start to build a channel of, okay, these are the people who are responding to getting out of debt. So now you remarket to those people with another ad that's a little bit more tailored to their intent. So um, that might sound kind of complicated on the surface, but it's really just a way of understanding, not just putting out stuff and saying, hey, we got people to our website. That's what 95% of the people do when they stop there. To get to the next level, you need to understand what the, why did those people come to my website? And then let's not stop there. How do then I start to do a drip campaign with them? Um, because their problems aren't, I mean, I guess I'm not telling you something you don't know, but, um, The problem in that, when that, when you're in that situation, that, that problem that pushes you to that point typically doesn't go away the next day when you wake up, it's, it's, it's lingering and you've got to deal with it. So I understand you are up against a little bit of time, but to understand who's showing intent, that would be pretty important. Uh, And again, that's a tactic that you can do for about four to $500 per month. Sure. No, you know, there's, there's a couple things there that just to clarify for people, you know, you mentioned the pixel. Um, a pixel is a piece of code that Facebook or Google can provide that you essentially put in your header or into your website, embedded yeah. into your website. And then it, it essentially tracks that user uh, for you. Um, so correct. It, but what I think is especially interesting there is that what you're suggesting too, is that if we retarget those people, um, you know, it depends on the marketing uh, article a person reads, but it's pretty well known that you have to touch these people five, eight, even a dozen times yeah. for them to take some sort of action. This is a really a great cost-effective way. If you're retargeting specific groups of people, it really allows you to keep that, that expense under control. Uh, absolutely. You know, the, you said something there, the best marketing book that nobody would acknowledge as a marketing book that was ever written was Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. <laughs> it's, it's over and over and over. But the best part about that is it's, he's, it's, it's not shouting. It's not invasive. It's very polite. Okay, how about now? And, and some people might say that would be irritating. But the point is, is that I'm counting as a, as a consumer of something. I don't respond to the, and I don't do it purposely. We're humans. We don't respond to the first message that we get. And and we can't, if you're in the business of, of what the business that your listeners are in, they're, they're, they're not, I would say that most of them are not timid, not shy people. It's a business where you've got to be a little um, confident to, to have these conversations with people and to put these kind of deals together uh, and with the kind of transactions that are going on. So Um, there shouldn't be any fear to talk to somebody over and over and over again. Again, we keep going back to relationship and shouting. It's just very important to understand that that's, you know, think back to when we got married or anything like that, or tried to date somebody. Um, You know, we usually didn't fare too well if we just walked right up and started shouting at the person and telling them everything that was, uh, that we could do for them. There was more of a 
bit by bit, small step by small step. And so I know that we want to get to the transaction. I know that we want to uh, pull the person out of the market because there's a lot of people competing for that. But you just got to, you've, you've got to focus on the importance of building that relationship in your marketing. You're just, you're just going to get better return on investment. Mm-hmm. No, that's especially interesting. You know, I think uh, as real estate investors, uh, some of us are very used to having multiple phone numbers for our marketing just to see you like doing some of that A-B testing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So translating that into a website where you're having different funnels, essentially, or a different page marketing wise, so you can track that type of return on investment that that just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I do think we've done an episode on the podcast. You and I talked about this briefly. I, you know, your website is becoming more and more obsolete. Google doesn't want, you know, the, the, it's not like the dirty little secret, but at the end of the day, if you never had to go to a website, Google would love that uh, because you come up and search your Google, my business is right there. Your phone number's there, any type of uh, content that you put out, any kind of testimonials, reputation management, all that kind of stuff is sitting right there. But we do control, we, us, the, the, the people trying to do business, we do control the people that come to our website. And so even though a website is, is trying to become, uh, you know, obsolete, maybe that's a strong term, but, uh, you know, the website is becoming more and more obsolete uh, by virtue of some of the things we just talked about you should still maintain your website and you should still keep the kind of content. And when we say content, I know that you ask 10 different people, they would say 10 different things. But when we say content, you know, the expectation when I come to your website based on the, the direct mail piece, based on something that you said, based on some referral that I got from out in the community, that expectation has to be fulfilled when I get to your website. And so, you know, I believe that in this space, less is more on your website a scrolling one page with just some links out to, um, you know, whatever referrals, houses that you, you know, whatever is a positive story for you. I just, I do think that the, the tactic of communicating directly with people, whether to their homes, whether they're in communities, getting them to your website, and then using that technology on your website to create those recurring conversations. To me, I think that's where the magic is for any, any marketing. Sure. So you were talking a little bit about that video, you know, mm -hmm. creating something. It, it sounds like essentially uh, you're driving them to a website, maybe having a video of some kind there. Um, it could be testimonials, but could you talk maybe a little bit about like what type of content seems to work really well, like that would attract people there to build that know, like, and trust that we're trying to accomplish? Yeah. So in this relation, in this relationship, I, I think, you know, emotional content is when you're dealing with um, the mat, the subject matter and the business segment that we're dealing with, I think it would be emotional. I don't think, you know, humor and fear, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, once a year, there's the big football game and humor ads take over mm -hmm. and you see all the insurance companies now preying on fear, not fear so much to scare you, but fear of, man, I don't want my daughter to have her car break down and not have access to some way to get help when she needs it. So take this precaution or the clapper or life alert, all those. So in this space, and I, we don't want to play with, um, you know, humor. I don't think we want to play too much with fear. I think this is about being genuine and be, I mean, this is a big thing there. There's, I mean, the reality is, is um, people are leery of certain business segments and and for right right or wrong this is a business segment that that people are nervous going into it's a financial exchange it's it's a house there's a lot of things going on they're hearing from outside noise that hey are you asking this question are you asking that question and so you've really got to because you're not in those conversations when they're talking if they should reach out to you. So you've got to put your, you've got to do some kind of video it's simple on your computer. You can put it up on YouTube, create your own YouTube page. It's free, link it to your website. All this stuff is easy and free to do. And if you just had a video about the five, the, you know, I, I like to tell people flip the shoes, put yourself, put yourself in their shoes and say to people, Hey, 
I, here's the five questions that you should be wondering right now if you're considering this. And so I, I would communicate with them and say, Here, here's what you should be considering right now. So I, I just think if they feel like you're being honest and that they feel like you're being, because they're going to want to believe that everyone is. And so if they just feel that you're a real person and that they feel comfortable with what you're saying, that's what I would put in the videos. It would almost be like a video series that says, get to know Eric or meet, meet the reads or something like that. And if that sounds corny, you know, it, it, Mark, it, business is a crowded, bit, there's a lot of competition in the world right now in business. And so if you're not, if you're afraid to be a little bit different, then you're always going to be running in the middle of the pack you need to do something a little bit different. And I think opening up and showing that you're vulnerable, showing that you're a professional business person, you're successful um, and you, you do care about them and you want to help them. And it's okay in those situations to have a business transaction. It's okay for you to make money in what you're doing. This isn't like a one-way street. I want to help you, but yes, there's benefit to me and be open and honest about that. Mm -hmm. No, that's especially important there that I wanted to call out, you know, being open and honest and you don't have to apologize for making money. I mean, they, they right. know you're doing that. I, I mean, it, right. I'm, I'm guessing that that's probably even a breath of fresh air to people if you just are open and honest about it. Yeah, I think we get to, I think you're right. I think we get way to, this is my personal philosophic opinion here, philosophical opinion is we think that marketing has to do something. We think that marketing has to be, let's get them to feel this way. It's the old, you know, go, you go back to this, all the sales movies where, you know, all the tricks to get to close and all that kind of stuff. The reality is marketing is, you know, the, the, the girl down the street who has the lemonade stand, marketing is her sign over her lemonade stand that says 10 cents on it. Marketing is, is, is her little basket of cute little things that she has there and you just want to support her lemonade stand. So I, we have to stop thinking about marketing has to be something that grips and pulls people to me. Marketing has to be something that tells an honest story of who you are and then you'll get the return that you want. Hmm. Well, I, you know, it, it feels like we could continue this for a lot longer, but I promised you I'd keep it to about 30 <laughs> minutes. Well, I, I, I hope I shared some thing, you know, sometimes in marketing, we can talk about the same things over and over. Um, so I hope I maybe gave a few things at, at the very least, if, if you just, if you're not going to change anything, if you want to do all the stuff you're going to continue to do, just stop for a second and just think, is there a little, are there any little tweaks that I could do it? Do I want to be more human? Do I want to be more relation, more of a relationship? Do I want to do things a little bit different than I've been doing for the past four years, five months, whatever it is, you've constantly got to be changing your approach or you'll never know what works better than the next thing. Right. No. And, and, you know, in this, especially now, you know, everybody's trying to make the absolute most out of every marketing dollar. You know, mm -hmm. we want to see that return on investment and, and spending some of that money in marketing, especially when you're starting out in real estate investing is frankly a little scary. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're worried that that money isn't going to come back in some way. Um, so I, yeah. I appreciate that uh, some of these ideas and strategies, because I, I do feel like we need to have a different approach. Yeah. I I'll give you one other tip that they, they might not like that. I'm leaking this out, but I used to run sales and marketing for, uh, for Gannett in the Midwest for, uh, for healthcare. And all the radio stations, all the newspapers, all the TV stations, they're all scrambling and coming up with things to, to be a part of the solution uh, and not just be a one-sided relationship where we take money and put this out. If it, doesn't, if it didn't work, there's no guarantees of marketing. That's been flipped a little bit. Every, every, you, know, you, should, you should call your media companies in town, wherever you're at, and ask them about pay for performance programs. Because mm -hmm. most of your, and I know, are you familiar with these at all? No. So a lot of media companies now are doing pay for performance where you sign a contract and, and they, they give you a lot of advertising. You just have to start to give them a percentage of the sales that you make off the ads. Now, that might be a proposition that somebody doesn't want to give up money, but that's marketing you don't pay for until it turns into a deal for you. No. It's, it's, that's, it's worth that's, investigating. Yeah. And that's definitely worth a question. I mean, mm -hmm. um, so, well, I, I appreciate 
all of your time here, Eric. Sure. Again, I want to point everybody to your podcast, uh, the Rethink Marketing Podcast. Make sure you check that and subscribe to Eric's podcast. Uh, I, I think you've uh, easily found enough value in our show here tonight to make it worthwhile to, to definitely go check out his podcast and some of that, those resources. I'll make sure to include all of those links in the show notes, but um, I know you're out of your box a little bit here, Eric, being on a real estate investing podcast, but yeah. I think it's, like I said, it's important to, to have these points of view from other sectors. And uh, well, yeah. I appreciate well, I your appreciate, time. Well, and I, sorry to interrupt you. I appreciate you having me on. I like, uh, it's nice to uh, speak to a group of people who aren't, uh, you know, in all the same marketing circles and so forth. So um, yeah, it's exciting. I, I, I love to see businesses thrive and succeed. And so if, if anything was uh, shared here that can help, that would make me feel good. So, so, well, I appreciate it again and I uh, hope we can do it again sometime. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you.